He told me when he arrived back in Europe, from Tahiti this was of course, that he had four francs in his pocket. But he wasn't worried, not in the least, because he'd brought all these paintings with him. And he was sure, not just sure, but as convinced as anyone could be, that once the paintings were seen, nothing would ever be the same for him again. Oh, Monsieur Leclerc! Madame, have you met your new neighbor, Monsieur Coquin? No, but I've heard of him, of course. Madame Ida Moulard, Paul Coquin. My husband is also an artist, and I hope you'll be a tolerant neighbor. I'm afraid he makes a lot of noise. He's a composer. Lucky man. He is at work at the moment. I don't, I don't hear anything. No, I mean at work at his job, at the Ministry of Agriculture. Ah. Is it tomorrow your exhibition will open? It is. Satisfactorily, I hope. There's every sign that, as I've always predicted, it is going to be the most remarkable triumph. I'm so glad. Now, if you'll excuse me. Goodbye, Julian. I don't see, do you, how they can fail to be impressed? Follow, uh, follow. I've waited a very long time for this, you know. Very long time. It means I wish I knew how to paint. You don't think we'll sell a picture? I'm convinced we won't. In that case, I have a better idea. What? Double the prices. Ah, Monsieur Volard. Madame, may I introduce to you Monsieur Gauguin, the artist? Madame. Monsieur. Most interesting. I've heard that before. I didn't say I liked them. I said they were interesting. But did you even mean that? Well, the abolition of perspective, for example. No one could deny that it was at least an interesting gesture. It's not a gesture. It's the outcome of a struggle. Yes, but perspective... Uh, I don't quite know how to put this. You uh, see? Most people are inept enough at expressing ideas in words. Can you imagine how difficult it is to express ideas without them? 
Well, anyway, this one I do like. Don't you? This one, yes. Although, personally, I've never really understood the principles of symbolism. It's not a question of understanding anything. It's a question of feeling. The guy's here. Number 37. Yes, Monsieur Degas. I wish to buy it. Have it sent round. Certainly, Monsieur Degas. Monsieur Degas, you evidently admire Monsieur Gauguin's work. He paints like a wolf. Monsieur Degas. You forgot your cane. Thank you. myself. We used to have the most terrible fights, but since he died, I find I've become very sentimental about yellow. But the fact of the matter is that only a quarter of the pictures at my exhibition were sold. And just as well, really, I hate to see them go, but it, it means they'll all be arriving soon, and I had to find a color which would set them off best. Monsieur Leclerc told us that Monsieur Duguay bought one of your paintings. That's right. Wish I could afford one of his. He also said Monsieur Duguay told you you painted like a wolf. Yes. What did he mean? Would you like something to drink? Tea? Absinthe? <laughs> no, thank you. Do you know the story of the dog and the hungry wolf? No. Sit down. There was a wolf who was starving to death, and he met a dog on the street. And he looked at him and he said, You're very fat. Where do you find your meat? And the dog said, I live with people, and they feed me. And the wolf said, and your coat is so sleek and shiny. And the dog said, my arrangement is really very comfortable. Why don't you come home with me? I'm sure the people will find room for you. You'll be housed and looked after and taken for walks and fed. And the wolf agreed. And just as they arrived at the dog's home, the wolf looked at the dog and said, what's that around your neck? And the dog said, what, that? That's my collar. And what happened? The wolf starved to death. But you're not going to starve to death. No. no. It's extraordinary how at the last minute, even as you lie expiring, some piece of meat will fall in your mouth. Well, what do you mean? Well, my exhibition. I had to, I had to pay for the posters, the publicity, the, Invitation cards, I had to frame the canvases. It cost more than I earned from the paintings I sold. So, starvation. But then, as always, the stroke of luck. What was it? My uncle Zizi. A kindly enough soul, but a man of the most exquisite uselessness. Finally did something constructive. What? He died. <laughs> and left me some money. Not much, but enough. How old are you? Fourteen. I know it. 
You're the same age as my daughter, Aileen, the last time I saw her. My father's an opera singer. No, he's a composer. <laughs> no, my real father, I mean. Not that fool. Do you have many children? Yeah, it's, I do have a great many, but... But she, this one, is my favorite. Lovely. I've had a letter from your father. He is in Paris, it seems. Is he coming home? No, he wants me to go to him. When are you going? Can we all go? If he wants to see me, he can come here when he gets his Anglicis money, half of which is ours. Certainly no intention of running around the world like a lunatic. What was it like in Tahiti? Oh, it must have been wonderful once upon a time. Before we arrived and started to destroy it. It's still beautiful. Once you get outside the town, so-called civilization, Tell me something about it. I've been there, um, oh, a few months, and I decided to take a journey around the island. And some people invited me to eat with them in their hut. Now, a woman asked me what I was doing, and for some reason, I don't know why. I said I was looking for a wife. <laughs> and she smiled at me and said, take my daughter. So I did. <laughs> I took her uh, back to live with me. And at first, I didn't know what the girl was thinking. And then I realized she was happy. And then I realized something, even stranger, something completely unfamiliar. I was happy. <laughs> it scared me. But why did you leave her? the uh, piano. What? Bring me the third of those paintings. There she is. Her name is Thea Amana. You said she was happy. Why does she look so sad? Oh. It is because they know how to be genuinely happy that they can also allow themselves to be genuinely sad. In any case, one of the many things they understand is that somewhere lying in wait is the most terrible thing that will ever happen to you. How old was she? What? Your wife in Tahiti. How old was she? Two years old. She's called Germaine. Aren't you going to kiss me? Oh. Mm. 
Why didn't you tell me you were coming? Where is she? to know you, to get to love you. And then you go off and leave her. Or maybe you take her away with you and leave me on my own. I couldn't stand that. I wouldn't do that. How can I trust you? If I leave you my address, won't you come and visit me? Perhaps. I meant to bring you some money. I had an exhibition, but... I didn't so much. So I... thought you this. What you mean? self-contained world with sounds, harmonies, nothing else. Nothing else except the Ministry of Agriculture. But that's your mistake, don't you see? If you left, if you escaped from there, you've no idea how much easier it would be. Ah, oh, he's too scared. That's enough from you. She's right, though, I suppose. I need a safety net. I need to know I can earn my living. Listen, in the first three months of 1880, I was a stockbroker. I made more than 40,000 gold francs. Enough to live for 10 years in Tahiti, and I was standing on the floor of the Bourse, dying on my feet. Aren't you afraid of anything? For me, all artists are like criminals. And of course, there's something every criminal is afraid of, prison. That's what Denmark was for me, prison. My wife was a jailer who had thrown away the key. That's why I had to escape. Kursk! Stop here, Stina! my leave of you. Ladies, gentlemen, with respect, I bid you adieu. are really very simple. What are they? Nobody likes my paintings. Nobody buys them. That's not so simple. 
You don't think so? I always think other people's problems are simple. Simpler than one's own. Are you going to stay in Paris? For a while. But not forever. I don't want to say I'm going to stay anywhere forever. To tell you the truth. Yes? If I could afford to go back, I think I would go back tomorrow. Then I'll just... Sometimes I'll come and see you. It'd be better. Better? Better for the child. And better for me. I really don't think you're going to want these. No harm in looking. Is he still in Paris? As far as I know. You won't be surprised to hear that he has gone very quiet since he inherited the money. Two weeks ago, he told me it hadn't arrived. I'm not sure I believe him. I have to go to Paris very soon. Do you want me to go and collect your share for you? Mm -hmm. think they were suitable for the children. That's why I locked them away. Mm. Well, there's no denying they are distressingly cruel. I told you. Still, I may as well take them. Our usual arrangement? Just because you're my brother-in-law, you mustn't feel you have to. That's all right. I mean, you must have dozens of them. About 30. Don't know where you put them all. Well, it's a very large house. Yes! <laughs> it's you. Yes. 
things out. Sit down. Have a glass of water. I won't, thanks. Days like this, you must long for the tropics. Not only days like this. May I? Help yourself. Van Gogh? That's right. His price is beginning to rise, did you know? Looks good, it'll do him. I can see you learned a lot from him. me a chair could be tragic. I taught him why. I don't suppose you'd like to sell me one of his, would you? No. I could give you a good price. You could give me a good price on one or several of my paintings, and I could accept it. Alternatively, you could go on trying to get me to part with one of the few memories I have of my closest friend, and I could kick you down the stairs. I'm sorry. I'd better tell you why I've come. Yes. Why don't you? You see her? She's Javanese. And? I gave it to a friend of mine. I thought she might be amused. But I'm afraid it was a disaster. She's hardly even house trained. No. Well, I thought... If you wanted her, you might be able to use her as a model or something. You want to dump her off on me? Naturally, in return, I thought you might allow me to exhibit one or two of your paintings in my gallery. If that interests you. You're not actually going to buy one, then? No. It was when the Javanese girl arrived that Paris began to be unbearable for him. She smelled of those hot islands and made him more than ever homesick for Tahiti. Come in. Mm. Nothing early today. He's nice. He is a tree. I can never resist an exile. Bonjour, madame. Why are you so cheerful? I decided to do some work. You said you were going to use me as a model. Did I? You like her? <laughs> yes. Uh, you can play with her later. Come here. Good. Up you get. Time to sing for your summer. What's your friend? Her name is Dior. What's this?
not very comfortable. Better? Yes. No, it isn't. Cross your feet. Do they have absinthe down there in Tahiti? Oh, come they have everything. <laughs> I hate to think of you living on coconut juice. <sighs> Only one thing I ever missed. <laughs> this. Going out for a drink with a few friends. You can't mix with the colonists. They're unspeakable, so I had no one to talk to. <laughs> I've been meaning to say, when you go back, how would it be if I came with you? Do you mean it? There's nothing for me in Paris. It'd be wonderful. Why, why don't you all come? A lot of women. Three a day, if you like. And plenty of drink, you say. practically give it away. Sounds good to I me. I didn't think the ministry would give me a leave of absence. Of course, William, I didn't mean you, but Paco. What do I sign? <laughs> what about you, Jordan? I know, you get nervous crossing the road. Well, if you're all going, I, I don't want to be left out. Oh, you, did, did you know what the best thing would be? Is that if there were several of us, then we could really organize, we could really fight back against the corruption. All the French out there, the whole administration, every single one of them is on the take. Listen to me. Let me try and make this absolutely clear to you because I don't think you're really concentrating. Now, imagine you are a provincial policeman, that is to say, ignorant and prejudiced, and they put you out to the colonies. Are you following? Monsieur Gauguin, don't you think it would be more profitable to put this in writing? I'm not interested in profitable. Now, are you following? I am listening. When you get there, you find that you have absolute power over people that you are stupid enough to think are inferior Monsieur to you. Gauguin. Wait a minute! And the law says that you can fine them for a lot of things that they never thought were wrong. And then, if you please, then, you can keep one-third of the money. Well, naturally, there are very heavy administrative expenses. Don't give me that shit! We're talking about people who are being bribed by you to commit every crime their limited intelligence can devise. I can't see what purpose is served by being offensive. It's just a question of finding the best way of... Catching his attention. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that was only the beginning. Afterwards, we went on to the conservatory. I was in a campaigning mood. I told the director that if he hadn't made a decision by the end of the week about whether or not he was going to perform your symphony, I'd come back and stand on his face. <laughs> I really think it might be better if you let me deal with these things myself. You were at work. And I expect I always will be. I'm sure you will. What's the matter with you? Nothing. Det är bara grannar. Jag kan komma tillbaka Nej, lite senare. Nej, kom in. Ska jag det? Ja. Säg för aldrig att jag bara talar svenska då. Ja, vi ska det. This is a friend of mine from Sweden, Mr. Strindberg. He's a writer. Strindberg. Gogan. Gogan är målare. Han bor en trappa upp. What sort of a writer? Theater mostly, but I'm afraid Swedish is the only language he can speak. Thinking of our conversation yesterday, William. Why shouldn't you come to Tahiti? Bring the family? No, I don't think so. We have pianos there, you know. And clay. We Swedes are far enough away from home as it is. I'd love to go. He's an interesting looking bugger. He could speak a civilized language. We could invite him to one of our Thursday discussions. Monsieur Gauguin, I'll be delighted to come. It's arrived! What? For old Uncle Zizi's cash. Uh, here at last. There we are. That's right, isn't it? Sure it is. Dead uncles. Every home should have one. At least. If only my grandfather had been as productive as I, this might have been an annual occurrence. <laughs> <laughs> uh! William! I've been able to buy some things for Germaine. A little something for you. Does that mean you're going away? No. I'm not sure there's enough for that. <laughs> yeah. Expecting any customers? Isn't it better if I come to you? Serious complaints from the concierge. Oh. It's best in the afternoon. What about your man? 
Leave her in her cage. It'll take her at least an hour to unwrap that horse. when you said you wanted to pose for me? What does that mean? What? Tifaruru? one or two things to do. You're working for me, you know. I'm here, aren't I? All right. Get ready. You can take over. I thought you were painting me. No, it's not the likeness I need. I just need the form. There's nothing to get upset about. I'm not upset. You just cheated me, that's all. Don't be silly. You won't get me to do that again. This is you like. Your mother wouldn't be very pleased if she knew. It's open. Who is that? Peter Lot Bondis. Who? Bondis. Uh, My brother in law. Engelbo's husband? That's right. Come on behalf of your wife. Oh. Uh, perhaps I should. <laughs> Don't worry about her. Sit down. It seems your uncle died uh, recently and left you some money. Indeed, yeah. Leading me to reflect that there is a God after all. Your wife feels she is entitled to half the legacy in view of the children and so on. I'm sure she's right. Can I afford to give her half of the legacy? That is the question that we should be asking ourselves. And why shouldn't you be able to afford it? Uh, you said in your letter you had had a very successful exhibition. Critically successful, I said. Ah. And on the other hand, I understand that she has been able to sell a large number of my paintings. Yes, true. Almost exclusively to me. Ah. Am I not entitled to half that money? I think I may be able to see a way out of this. Suppose you were to let me use her half of the legacy. 
to buy back my paintings. I should let you buy back my paintings with her money? No, you should let me buy back my paintings with Uncle Zizi's money. But it's she who needs the money, not I. I see. Impasse. Besides, I have grown rather attached to your paintings. <laughs> you don't mean to tell me that that abominable little country has at last produced a man of taste. You don't care for Denmark? I detest it. But one, of, one of the tragedies of my life is that the majority of my children are being brought up to be Danish. I can't agree. But of course you can't. Have a drink. No. I think I'd better leave now. I have enjoyed our little chat. Som solen morgen skiner, som stjernene blinker i sky. Jeg kjenner en flika i bygden den fina, en flika i denne her by. Min venn, min venn, å elske hos blommer, Ha kom, vi kunde til samme hans komma, og du vore vennen min. O jag allra kjærestan din, o edela hus og forhyvande skri. Make yourself useful, will you? Offer the cakes around. Enjoying yourself? I'm just going upstairs a moment. I shall be long. Why are you going back? 
Yes? If these paintings say anything, they say, I have found my home. My plan is to start an artist's colony back there with several of my friends from downstairs. I see. Julian is coming as our chronicler. That's right. It's principally a matter of finances. Oh, yes. Finances. Normally our Thursdays are more in the way of an aesthetic discussion. Tonight is exceptional a celebration as I've just come into a little money. Which you would rather spend on drink than on boat tickets. What could be more understandable? You have a monkey. Yes. I'm extremely interested in monkeys. I've done a great deal of research into Darwin's theories. And I think I've been able to establish quite conclusively that in many respects he was entirely misguided. And I have proved, for example, that the gorilla is the offspring of a shipwrecked sailor and the common female ape. Really? Yes. Which brings us back, in a way, to your painting. Thank you, Julian. like what one cannot understand. You see, who are these women? What, what do you mean? Well, a civilized woman. The kind of woman we might legitimately idealize is innately inferior to man. I just published a paper on the subject. So how much more inferior and unworthy of the attention of an artist must be these? Savages. <laughs> oh, you're quite wrong. The so-called savage is infinitely more civilized than we can ever be. That's a preposterous suggestion. Why do we suffer? Why do you suffer? Well, I... What I mean is, here in Europe, we suffer all the time. Jealousy. Possessions, money worries, ambition, continual discontent. These people suffer as well, of course they do, intensely. But for moments, moments of grief, pain, not like us. We spend a whole lifetime fighting our way blindly towards all the things that are a natural part of their existence. Acceptance, calm, trust. Respect for others, and we never get there. Because we, all of us, have forgotten what they have not forgotten. The secrets of innocence. In any case, monsieur, it's quite clear that you are a true artist. And I know I shall dream of these paintings. Me. Hmm. 
I never want to see you again. Who was that? It's a friend of mine. You want to see me down again? No. No, that's enough for today. Perhaps it's time we left Paris. I like Paris. As soon as I finish this, we'll go to Brittany. Shall we leave in the spring, then? Yes, yes. yes. Absolutely. That only gives us four or five months to find the money for the fair. And if anyone's in real difficulty, there's still some of Uncle Zizi's cash left. Viva Uncle Zizi. <laughs> Viva Uncle Zizi's cash. While he was away, looking at the things he had made and the objects he chose to live with, I felt his presence more strongly than ever before. And I missed him. One's a monkey. Shouldn't we turn back? Certainly not. I know all about sailors. There used to be one. It's all wind. Take no notice. Hey! How come you're so much bigger than your brother? Dirty nigger. <clears throat> Ow! Hey! You hit him! Yes. He's my son. Then you should teach him better manners. What? <clears throat> uh. Paco! O'Connor! Paco. Huh? Uh, uh, here. Uh, uh, oh. uh, go. Each one 
contains its own emotions. You must try to marry the object to the color which best expresses its essence. You, you'll find down there all this is much easier to grasp. The clarity. You, you'll understand that it is the simplest shapes that translate the deepest feelings. Also, it's warmer. <laughs> then you had better go back to Paris. And how am I supposed to live? You lived before you met me, didn't you? Why do people depend on others? Go back to my studio and choose a painting. Take it to Ambroise Vallard. Nobody wants your paintings. in his leg. He asked if he can send Judy down to Pont Aven to look after him. Let me go. It's out of the question. But I want to go. I'd be happy to look after him. It's out of the question. You must tell them, Julian, it's serious now. They must start making their arrangements. I will. I want to go as soon as possible. In the new year. I understand. Did you know Mel Glonak was taking this instead of rent? You told me, yes. Anna said nobody wanted my paintings. Oh, she knew nothing. I'm told, you know, I'm told down here my paintings are highly valued. Ones I saw last time I stayed here, when the owners grew tired of them, I understand they found there was nothing like treated canvas for resoling their shoes. his return, I was ridiculously happy. I ought to have known that as every day passed, he was being frozen out of France. Anna moved out. She took 
took everything with her. All my money. Everything. I always knew she was too civilized. The worst of it is I don't have enough now to buy my fare. What fare? Back to Tahiti. Well then, I'm glad she stole your money. Bring some money. No, on the contrary, I was hoping to borrow some. But what about our share of the inheritance? It was stolen. What? Every penny of it was stolen from my studio last month. You can't expect me to believe that. Nevertheless, it's true. So you have come here to beg. I, ju I just need to get enough money together to get me back to Tahiti. I should never have come back to Europe. It was a bad mistake. There's nothing for me here. Once I'm there, I will never trouble you again. And you expect me to give you money? What about your children? Yes, what about my children? Where are they? When I knew you were coming, I sent them to my sisters for the day. If you have no money, I thought I might make an arrangement with Ingeborg's husband. What's his name? Brandis. He likes my don't work. Don't you dare go near him. Why not? I don't want you to. That's why not. All right. He's got more than he knows what to do with this. It is. Yes, sold to him by you. I told you. Father. Oh. My father. Have you come back? Come and speak to you later. Yes. Now you've upset her. Why couldn't you have left us alone? I will. I am going to. You are never going to see me again. Good girl. I understand it's your birthday. Well, this is hardly the place to spend it. It's the first time I've ever been in hospital. I was quite right to keep away for so long. I must say, you meet the most inferior class of person. 
I'm afraid I haven't brought you a present. Huh? On the contrary, I want you to give me a present. Go on. I'm holding a sale of my paintings at Hotel Duro to raise money for us to go to Tahiti. I'd like you to write a note for the catalog. No. No. Why not? But I told you before, I can't understand these primitive barbarities. I saw your play last month, The Father. Oh, yes? It was far more barbaric than anything in my poor paintings. You think so? It showed more clearly than anything I've seen for years that the ordinary bourgeois household is deadlier than the deepest jungle. <laughs> you should have supplied your hero with a machete. Well, top hats on naked savages where there are men and more especially women. There is destruction. Why don't you write me a letter explaining why you don't want to write a catalogue note? And I'll use it as a catalogue note. You know why I'm here? It's called psoriasis. When I close my hand to write, the blood bursts out between my knuckles. It's not enough for artists to suffer mentally, as they must, and materially, as they do. In the end, they suffer physically, in the very act of creation. Yes. Life being what it is, one dreams of revenge. At least if I get away, I can escape all that. No, you won't escape. But I salute the attempt. I have to leave hospital next week when the money runs out. I'll write you your letter. Thank you. But you'll never escape. Does everybody understand? You keep bidding until each picture gets to 300 francs. I can't afford to sell them for less. Two hundred francs, two hundred and twenty, two hundred and fifty, two hundred and eighty, three hundred francs, three hundred and twenty, three hundred and fifty. See already on the first one. Three hundred and eighty, four hundred francs, four hundred francs, four hundred and fifty, four hundred and fifty. First time, second time, third time, at four hundred and fifty, sold to Monsieur Degas. The next lot is this striking portrait entitled Anna the Javanese. Anybody bidding 100 francs? 100 francs? Nobody bidding? No bid for this lot? Anybody bidding 100 francs? Anybody bidding 100 francs for this portrait? Nobody bidding 100 francs? 100 francs for this lot? Anybody bidding 100 francs for this lot? One, 100 francs? 100 francs? It's your bid at 100. Anybody else? At 100 francs, 100, 120, 120 francs, 120, 150, thank you. At 150, 180, 180, 180, 200, 200 francs, 200 francs, 200 francs, 220, 220. 250, 250, 250, 280, 280, 280, 300 francs. At 300, first time, second time, third time, 300 francs sold to this gentleman there. The next lot, counting the ones we bought in, and the percentage on them, you should clear about 1,800 francs. Is that all? My God. The ticket's nearly a 1,000. There won't be enough over to buy somewhere to live.
Oh, well. <laughs> Paco Shodana and O'Connor asked me to tell you something. What? They've decided they don't want to go. It's just us. I don't have any money. Well, look. There's enough here to get the two of us there. We'll have to find a job for a while when we arrive. I can't go. I wanted to. I thought I wanted to. I lay there all last night, turning it over in my mind. I'm frightened. I'm sorry. You go. Uh, tell the others I'll be along soon. to bargain with you. All right. You're going back? Yes. Quite right. If you don't mind my saying so, you should never have returned. I mean, that's you. That's your personality. People think of you as the man in Tahiti. They don't want to see you here. It confuses them. I wanted to propose a deal to you. I'm listening. You send me 200 francs a month. I'll send you everything I do. No, I'll leave it a while if you don't mind. Of course I mind. How am I going to eat? Thought everything grew on trees. Not since we got there. You manage. Keep in touch. I'll send someone for the pictures. No, you take them with you. What? Get them out of here. I don't want to see them again. I can't carry all three. You want them or don't you?
I don't understand why you want to go. I may as well starve there as anywhere. It's horrible to me. William's an idiot. You don't want a completely different world. We could live together. Have children. I've always felt like a father to you. How can it be a father to me? I want you to find your own children. I'm keeping the lock of your hair. the autumn he was back in Tahiti at last, where it seems that he was very happy for a while.
Vocês viram só? Agora vocês entendem por que a gente diz que com a Jaguar Vídeo chegou a fera do mercado.